In ancient times, magicians taught their students about the enigmatic nature of fairies. These magical beings possess their own unique way of thinking and their own value system that are very different from our own. Fairies hold true power. They are capable of bestowing good fortune upon us or casting ill wishes if provoked. It is imperative that we strive to understand them better to ensure that our interactions with them remain safe. Beware, for fairies can turn malevolent and vengeful if slighted. In rural communities, they are cautiously referred to as the good folk, the gentry, the good neighbors, or the little people. Brownies are a particular group of fairy that form bonds with the household and within the families in a household. Lady Wilde's account, Ancient Legends of Ireland, describes how the brownies dislike those who take all the food and leave nothing for the wandering spirits. Neglectful maids face dire consequences in that regard. Fairies are proud and easily offended, so timely, modest offerings are best. Extravagant gifts are seen as insults and will cause the fairy helper to depart forever. Discretion is also paramount. Anyone who spreads gossip about their invisible presence will also find themselves abandoned. A good rule of thumb for when offering something to the fairies is they like cake and they like sweet wine. And if you can find just a very small token you will be highly regarded by the household fairies. Remember also that when leaving any kind of offering out, that if there's danger of ants or vermin or things like that, then you can find other ways to bring your offerings. Sometimes even having a small place outdoors is a way of helping. The other thing, too, is that a small gesture of a piece of cake and a small little bit of wine placed for just a small period of time and then cleaned up and disposed of is fine. Now, the brownies resemble the spirits of ancient Roman households. They were called the Lares and the Penates. The Lares were spirits of ancestors represented by small figurines in a sacred shrine. Daily prayers and offerings were devoted to them, while special rituals were conducted during significant familial events. The penates were guardians of the larder and received gratitude for ensuring a family's sustenance. They possessed their own miniature sanctuary within each household. Thus, the tales of the brownies and their parallel to Roman lattes and penates continue to weave a tapestry of enchantment and household mysteries. The annual festival of the Lares was known as Compitalia, which centered around crossroads believed to hold mystical significance associated with the lunar goddess Hecate. A shrine was established at these crossroads featuring openings in all four directions to facilitate the passage of the Lares. The winter celebration took place around January 2nd, and each household offered honey cakes as a gesture to grant good fortune for the year ahead. People in Old England believed in a helpful spirit named Robin, living by the fireplace in their homes. This spirit, also known as a brownie, had a strong bond with women and assisted with domestic chores. Women, because of the gender roles of the time, could communicate with the spirit, and it was nourished by the fire, safeguarding its existence. In modern times, the household spirits still are active, but they respond to whoever is taking care of the home and the fire and the hearth, regardless of their gender. Brass was traditionally used in England for the magic square of the spirit of the home. But ancient symbols of bronze and pottery plates have been found. The modern decorative plaque we see today is descended from these ancient spirit of the home plates, although its magical designs have been replaced by purely aesthetic ones. If you want to create a magic square for prosperity in your home, obtain a plain square tile colored green or white 
and use black tile paints available at any hardware store to replicate the design depicted in your lesson. Begin by drawing the grid and then add the symbols in a top to bottom, left to right sequence. Complete this task on the night of a full moon and afterwards place your finished square on your mantelpiece or somewhere by your fireplace. There is no requirement for the utterance of any specific incantations or any other specific ritual. If your home lacks a fireplace, position your square against any south-facing wall. In household lore, the spirit of the home residing near a fireplace foretells future events. A fire refusing to ignite or repeatedly extinguishing itself indicates impending illness, while crackling fires with sparks foretell financial blessings. A fire that burns with a hollow sound is a sign of an unexpected visitor who will take up temporary residence in the home. Witness these occurrences firsthand and find them to be reliable omens. If you have a fireplace in your home, however the fire is reacting, you will recognize over time that this is a way that the spirit of the home can be communicating to you through omens. Those are mystical occurrences associated with the spirit of your home affirming that the keeper of the house receives advanced notice of forthcoming events from a friendly spirit, often referred to in ancient times of England as Robin. To appease the spirit and to invite good fortune into your home, there's an ancient ceremony that you, if you have the wherewithal to perform it, is amazing. It requires a fireplace or hearth, however. So if you don't have one of those, then you might be able to figure out a way to modify the ritual, or you may just want to omit this ritual completely. So to appease the spirit of the home and invite good fortune, acquire logs made of apple wood. Soak them in seawater or brine for 28 days and ensure that they are thoroughly dried before burning them. This will reward you with the flames boasting rainbow colors and a delightful fragrance that will permeate your dwelling for days. According to ancient beliefs, luck will arrive via the front door within one month. Embrace these practices with an earnest intent, and the spirit of your home will bestow its blessings upon your hearth. Flower magic is so powerful in households, especially if you're working with the fairy. Vibrant bouquets are carefully crafted with tradition and purpose to bring luck into the home. The identity of the creators of a lot of these ancient rituals is shrouded in mystery, but the Midsummer Day posy provides a clue. This posy is a cherished gathering of the Festival of Flora, the enchanting goddess of the flowers, and holds significance as an ethereal overlap between the mortal world and the realm of the fairy. There's a quaint country rhyme that prescribes the flowers for this luck posy with descriptions rather than explicit names given in the posy gathering song. This song has an accompanying melody reminiscent of a harp music or cascading water, which can be found in Alma's folk songs. The rhyme goes, For day and light these petals bold, White in the night for she is cold, For brave and strong in color red, And yellow bright for children's bed, In purple robe there is a king, These scented petals love will bring, There's six of them, and this is seven, that none shall be forgot in heaven. So each line of that song corresponds to a different flower adorning the posy in sequence. If you are making these posies for good luck, this arrangement is simply calling on the seven days of the week, and the angels of each day of the week correspond to their own flower. So Number one is Sunday, so any golden color flower or marigold. Number two, any white flower, including the lily. Number three, Tuesday, any red flower. Number four, on Wednesday, is any yellow colored flower. Number five, which is Thursday, any purple colored flower. Number six, which is Friday, any 
rose. Anael is known as the rose angel, so you would use a rose for Friday. And number seven, any kind of evergreen, any kind of evergreen for Cassiel. So working with that, you can make a posy. And when you do that, even if you went to a florist or even if you got them from your garden, you want to imagine yourself gathering flowers from this magical garden and putting them together and bringing them into your home, putting them into a vase and inviting the energy of all seven of those angels, all of which, through the power of flower magic, invite so many fairy blessings because the fairies and flowers are intricately bound. Now, one of the reasons why we work fairy magic is not for personal gain necessarily, although a lot of people have through history tried to interact with the fairy because they want their blessings, which are very powerful. But we have to realize that where we are right now as a planet is we are at a time when the divide between the fairy realm and the natural world and humanity are very far apart. And there is a growing contempt for humanity amongst the fairy kingdom because of what we've done and what we continue to do to them through our own harming of the earth. So one of our goals as magicians when we work fairy magic is to help atone and be in a place of asking for help to heal this rift so that there can be miraculous magical healing of the earth that occurs because of the fairies. But instead, what happens is as we tend to turn our backs on the earth, turn our backs on the fairy kingdom, turn our backs on the goddess, what we have done is forced the fairies farther and farther into that middle kingdom where they have very little regard for us and very little desire to do anything to help us. So our jobs as fairy magicians are more, in my opinion, those of ambassadors and learning and trying to find a way to bridge that gap so that we can heal the earth and that we can find some sense of harmony with the fairy kingdom. So as we do that, one of the ways that you can begin this is to invite the household fairies in your home and make friends with them. And the way that you do that is you have to remember that brownies are the household fairies. That's what we call them. There's many different names, but that's what we call them in this course. They demand order. So the more you take care of the way that your house is, clean, orderly, organized, beautiful, bringing in those flowers. Even if you can't make a full-on posy, bringing in flowers into your home and with natural or sometimes even synthetic fragrances within the home to bring the fragrance of nature into your home is very pleasing to the household spirits. And you will find blessing upon blessing given to your home just because you are doing your part to make those brownies happy. The other thing, like I said before, that you can do is leave a little gift, just a little cake, a little wine. And if you don't have cake and wine, even a little bit of what you had for dinner for them. Nothing extravagant. They don't like extravagance. What they like is that you include them and that you recognize who they are and that they are capable of offering help. And that kind of gratitude and that kind of cleanliness, orderliness, and kindness of heart are what the brownies respond to the most. So the more we can increase the level of peace in our households and turn down fighting and arguing and things like that and to help to maintain a vibration of joy and peace, order and loveliness within our homes, the brownies will continue to gift us with blessing upon blessing. And that is the beginning of being able to forge a very realistic relationship with the fairy kingdom. That's the very beginnings, is right within our own homes. So, for this week, I want you to find a 
a place and a time to make that square of the household and either put it on your hearth or on a south-facing or next next to a south-facing wall, even if you have to hide it behind something. And also last week's handout, there's a couple of other things that in the homework that you want to complete. One is completing your two squares of NIL. And also, if you haven't already done so, your seal of Agrippa. And all of that is included in your handout. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be.